great. We should be live here. Um, just trying to see real quick here. Let me make sure that the all right. How's everybody doing today? Hopefully well. Good afternoon, or whatever it is, wherever you are, depending on who's all who all is turn, tuning in. Good. All right. Okay, today we're actually going to start out with some scripture. I haven't been doing that. Um, so, but there's an important one here. The future of old paths living. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. And unfortunately, most people will say what they said. We will not walk therein. Um, but here's the thing. Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. When you stand in certain ways and you're, and you're looking and seeing what things work and you're praying to God and saying, what are the old paths? How can I simplify my life? Um, that's very important. And that's going to get a lot more important as time goes by um, right now we are not ready to go full on old paths ancient ways of living back like they did in the first century we're just not ready for that at this point in time there's the structure still there the all the you know taxation the electric grid the food system the people that are out there whatever else the vehicles and there's a lot of things that you there's just no way that you could go back to what our ancestors the way that they would have lived so i'm not saying that you if you're not living that way then you're somehow wicked or whatever no not at all um but could it happen in the future if things really break down before we get called up to be with the lord could it happen in the future that we will go back to a very ancient primitive way of living in order to stay away from the big brother control grid that's coming that's being developed all the Agenda 2030 stuff, the Great Reset, all the things that we're seeing that are just insane. And you just think, oh, wow, it really is going to be bad in the time of Jacob's trouble. But how much of it will we see before then? I don't know. Um, and that's something that we all have to pray about. Uh, James chapter 1, verse 5 is one of the very important verses, um, true for anybody. Dispensationally, it's more towards a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble, but um, very true, a very good thing for us as well. James chapter 1, verse 5, I'll read that verse quick. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Um, if you lack wisdom, then you have to ask God to provide that for you. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've made mistakes with off grid living, with I thought this would work. I thought that would work, and it did not work. Um, we all have to ask for wisdom. I have to ask for the old paths, and that's the future, and uh, this of what we might have to face. Um, are there conveniences to being on on grid? Sure, absolutely. We're having one of those conveniences right now: electricity and the internet and and um, all the different things that we have in our more modern world. But the problem is, those are going to eventually be used to enslave people. They already are. And that's the problem. And so I want to go over a couple points here. And, I, you know, I get the thing a lot from people. Well, I can't go off grid. I, I can't do this. I can't live like that. Well, um, there are ways that you can. And I will explain there are ways that you can ease into that lifestyle so first and foremost we have to understand that wisdom comes from god real true wisdom comes from god 
It does not come from lost people that are into the new age movement and whatever else that are, you know, green environmentalist, you know, socialists or something like that. And you can look at some of what they do. I have through the tiny home stuff that's on YouTube and whatever else. But ultimately, the real knowledge that we're looking for, it has to come from God and not just the knowledge, but the protection from the Lord. Um, people, a lot of people just think that, you know, oh, we had the pandemic and now it's over and or close to being over or it's endemic or whatever. And we're just going to kind of go back to the way the world once was. We're not going back. There will be no going back um, with a lot of the things that are happening already. Uh, it's going to get bad. Let's just face it. It's going to get bad. Uh, when you when Jesus talked about the beginning of sorrows, he mentioned um, wars and rumors of wars. We're seeing that pestilence. Um, and I don't think that's a, a fake pestilence either. I think it's actual real pestilence, bioweapon type of stuff and whatever else. Um, and even disease and sickness that is going to come as a result of one of the other things, famine. Um, that is coming, unfortunately, pretty quickly. I believe we could start seeing a lot of that this year, even 2022. So how do we get through this thing? Well, as Christians, as those that are saved, we can actually have God's protection and God's provision in these very tough times. You see that all throughout the Old Testament, how God provided for certain um, prophets and, and men when Israel itself was being judged and yet God would protect certain people and certain families so we can have God God is your greatest survival um, weapon or whatever would, would you want to call it uh, God can protect you through this hard time but here's some there's a few things you need to remember okay the old paths the ancient ways how is it that ancient people thrived without electricity? How is it that they were able to do that? Well, see, if you believe in evolution, then you'll say, well, they were primitive. I don't understand that. They just were kind of, you know, they died when they were 30 years old or something like that, which is nonsense. Totally nonsense. Um, there were some people that did die fairly young, but most of those were in the city. Uh, where it was very unsanitary and things, and, and they did a lot of things that were really dumb back then. But, I mean, the history books, I don't trust the history books for a lot of the details, you know, of how people once lived. Um, I just don't. I mean, I've read different accounts and things where, you know, people in the past weren't dying at just young age, and they were just small and really kind of dumb and whatever else. I mean, our King James Bible is a perfect witness to that. You know, translated over 400 years ago and on a level that the scholars of today can't even fathom. You know, the, the men back then were brilliant writing dictionaries and, and a, a boy, I forget if it was Lancelot Andrews or one of them, and he's reading and writing Hebrew when he was six years old. You know, uh, compared to today, oh, they, they sure were dumb and primitive. They weren't primitive. They weren't dumb. And you're studying the the ancient Viking people and things like that, the Nordic people, um, they were building boats that baffle modern boat builders. How could these boats go so fast? They were really, and they barely, you know, sunk into the water very much. They just went right on top of the water. They could take them up and through creeks and little small rivers going up in. They'd sail in, conquer, a, you know, attack, raid a village or whatever else, turn around and get out of there before they had time to reinforce and whatever else. They were incredibly intelligent in the past. I mean, look at the pyramids, look at Machu Picchu, the down in South America there or whatever. Uh, look at a lot of the things the ancient people did. They weren't stupid. <laughs> they were not stupid. Um, just reading the Bible accounts and everything else, they, I mean, they were incredibly intelligent. They were able to do a lot. And that stuff is still there. It's, those materials and things, they're all still there. Um, I mean, even my grandfather on my mother's side, my maternal grandfather, Bernard Fry, and he was an expert in terms of identifying wild edible type of things and whatever else. I mean, he was raised with, they went out and they picked a lot of that stuff. I learned a lot of my wild edible knowledge of today from him, but he knew 10 times more than I know. And he could go out into the forest and he could just, well, that's edible. That's not this here. Oh, this, 
that's actually really rare here. You know, and he'd find things that just blow your mind and tell stories of how this would work and this thing. Amazing. And that's just, you know, two generations back from me. You know, you look at the older generations and they knew so much more than the younger generations. What if you go back 500 years ago? A thousand years ago? See? We have people have this weird mindset. Oh, they were primitive back then and we're smarter now. It's evolution philosophy. It's not true. Not at all true. So, oh, we're, we're more advanced if we're on grid and we're all computerized and we have machines that do every little thing for us. No, you're not. You're not more intelligent if you do that. You're more dependent. And that's what the devil wanted to get for the end times. He wanted to get people dependent. Think about it. No man might buy or sell save he that had the mark. Uh, you have to have a little mark or something like this to, to go out and buy or sell. Why Why would you even care? Hey, let's make our own money. Let's go out and just say, well, we don't know to, need to go to the store or need this or that. Or All the things that people are controlled by in the end times just showed up in the last few hundred years. What if they seize my bank account? People in the past didn't have bank accounts. Couldn't be bothered with it. You know, banking and all the, the system of fiat currencies and, and debt, you know, base this and that. You create wealth through debt. You know, it's it's folly. So our God is it there. He is able to take us and show us those old paths. How did ancient man, not primitive, how did ancient man make these things happen? God, please show me what I'm supposed to do. Things start breaking down and whatever else, and you have to leave a city. I mean, the people in the Ukraine and things, I'm sure if there's some cities over there that they're fleeing, that might happen here in America. And all of a sudden you find yourself heading out into the woods someplace and thinking, okay, I kind of need some of that old paths wisdom right now, God. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give you a couple things to think about here in terms of the future of old paths living. Um, first off, I think that people need to rethink food preservation. And um, what I mean by that is a seasonal diet. There are certain things that are in season, and you know, the Bible even talks about in season, out of season. Um, not in relation to food, I realize, but you know, think about the the mindset of people there. There are certain things that are in season. So if a huge portion of the population of this country gets wiped out in the future here and wars and whatever else. Well, you might have to say, hey, in season, I can go up north and I can do this and I can do that. And then other parts of the year, I'll go down south or I'll go over here and I'll do this. and I'll do that. I know for sure that there's still some whatever wild animals down there or this or, you know, you can travel around. Let's just say even today, um, rethinking the thing of refrigeration. Again, we're talking off-grid stuff here. So um, can you build a cold cellar? Are there preservatives? Are there ways that, you, you know, natural preservatives, uh, salt, sugar, uh, vinegar, things like that, that you can put with your foods to preserve them without the need of freezing them or refrigerating them? Um, are there ways that you can can certain things like meat and fish and whatever else, things that won't be destroyed by heating them? You start to can fruits and vegetables. Well, that's problematic because you're heating them, which kind of destroys a lot of the enzymes and things. Um, takes down the nutritional level of that stuff. Are there ways that you can preserve foods without refrigeration? Things that come into season, you have a big harvest of whatever crop. Um, are there ways to preserve those? Uh, what about fermentation? Can you preserve through fermentation uh, the things that are in season? so that you have them in three months. Something to think about. Another one, um, you know, uh, another one, I'll say this, I'll skip ahead in my notes here a little bit. The idea of hot refrigeration. So, what? Hot refrigeration? Yeah, I've, I've actually, we've done some experimentation on this. And um, uh, another thing that you can do, there was a, guy a hunting guide in this area and he basically had a big stock pot and he would go around he had a trap line i think it was 110 miles that he would travel 
in the winter and he would go and he would check his different traps and if he caught say a beaver or something like that he would skin it and things and then he would take the meat and put it in, into a stock pot oh i didn't catch one so i'll go out on the lake and do a little bit of ice fishing and catch a brook trout or whatever other kind of fish and you take that in you you clean it and things you drop the meat into the stock pot oh here's some of this or some of that i have some salt that i brought with me and some garlic cloves i'll put that into the stock pot and you just keep that stock pot going putting more meat in or other things that you can eat and you can basically preserve your food pretty much almost constantly by keeping your stock pot going keeping it hot the food doesn't really spoil um it's very interesting and you can do that for a long time um, we've had stock pots going on our wood stove and i'd say probably for two weeks we just add a little bit more meat or add some more potatoes or add some more carrots or some more celery or whatever else and you can keep that thing going no refrigeration um you can keep it going for a while and bone broth and whatever else in there um very healthy extremely healthy for you so another thing to think about what did they do in the ancient times they didn't have refrigeration I and mean, there was no refrigeration until you know maybe 100 years ago maybe a little bit of experimentation before then but certainly in everybody's homes i would say less than less than 100 years ago so <clears throat> something to think about um another thing to think about uh electricity is very dangerous right i mean you get right down to it yes i'm using it yes we all use it i get it but when you think about it if god would take away the electricity if the electricity grid would go down uh we'd actually be healthier electricity puts off fields you can get shocked by it it can burn your place down happened to me when i was a child our house there was actually a tree came down in a, in a bad windstorm and it caused a short and there was something went wrong they didn't have something wired into the house right and it basically caused the wires inside the one rear wall of our house to get really hot and they actually lit the wall on fire and we called the we had to run to the neighbor's place and, and use their phone called the fire department by the time they got there the whole bottom part of our house was burned and everything else was just messed up because of smoke damage and the you know they had to come in and rebuild the house and everything else but it was electricity that did it had we been you know free of the grid we would never have had a house fire and we burned wood there since 1978 1978 to 2001 wood was our only source of heat that entire time so oh you know it's just a, there's dangers of being off grid well if you keep your chimney clean and you don't use a lot of candles or open flames or whatever else there's not very many dangers um people that have their houses burned down because of a wood stove it's because they don't clean the chimney they, they are burning wet wood with a lot of pitch and sap in it whatever else that's what burns the houses down uh, or they'll be careless and leave the doors of the wood stove open and a spark goes out onto the floor and they don't catch it in time and it burns the place down but for the most part it's a lot safer to be without electricity so power grid would go down and you have to live the rest of your life till the lord catches us up um and you have to live without electricity uh, it actually be safer in many ways and healthier too um you say well then i guess we should just live like the amish live um, well, I hate to burst your bubble. Anybody out there that thinks very highly of the Amish, um, they are not independent of the electric power grid. All right. Um, they're not. They are not. Uh, being from Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, we used to just laugh at people. Um, there were so many different Amish that had electric power grid, electric hooked up to their farms, and they hide it, whatever. They put the lines underground and and um, literally knew a... a uh, Amishman, his name was Daniel Zook. He had a big wood turning replication business, and he's dead. He died of cancer a number of years ago. Um, but I did some work with him, making chair spindles for him as a pattern, and then he would replicate them. And um, I remember we went to his shop one time. He had this big barn and, and really big equipment in it and everything else. And um, he had this big, you know. I forget what the thing was, $35,000 or something, computerized lathe, wood lathe, you know, and and, uh, and he goes to turn the thing on so he could show me how it worked. And he 
He goes over, kneels down in front of the lathe, and he pulls up one of the floorboards. And underneath, you can see the wires coming in, and there's the plug. And he gets the plug for the the uh, uh, big computerized lathe, and he plugs it in, and he looks up, and he grins, and he says, don't tell the bishop, and he smiles. You know, and then he turns his lathe on, and all the computer screen comes up and everything, and I just thought, yeah, um, we know about a lot of that stuff. Um, and, you know, of course, if there's enough money coming in, the bishop just kind of looks the other way. The bishop is the head of the Amish church, if you don't understand that. But um, Amish are not independent of the electric grid. You get some of the really strict, like the Schwartz and Trooper types or whatever else, they will claim to be and try to be and whatever else. But even they, you know, they, they kind of look favorably towards that electric power grid. And, and uh, they'll be very... Um, uh, hypocritical in the in the sense of, oh, you know, we we don't drive you know vehicles. That's worldly and everything else. But then they want their neighbors that have vehicles to drive in places, and uh, so, yeah. Uh, if the power grid goes down, the Amish are not going to just be able to continue on in their ways and whatever. Uh, Amish are very parasitical when it comes to business. They need the English world, the non-Amish world. They need them to make money. So the Amish, you know, with their crafts and their baked goods and their uh, furniture and their tiny houses and sheds and whatever else, they need the uh, world out there to sell that stuff to. Um, I don't know of any Amish communities in all of America, all of North America, I should say, both Canada and North America, or and America. Um, I don't know of any Amish communities that are just self-supporting and they just, they don't have anything to do with anybody. I don't know of any. Um, so, uh, independence from the power grid, uh, don't look to the Amish there. I mean, there's some things that they do, right? Absolutely. But, uh, a lot, you know, um, you have to think a little bit harder on some of this stuff. Another thing I see coming in the future, if you want to be free from the smart cities and the whatever other stuff, again, I don't know if that stuff will come in before we the Lord takes the church out of the you know situation here on the earth. I don't know, but um, what's coming in the future, horses and walking for transportation or bicycles or other, you know, things that are non-gas related. Um, another thing I've looked into quite a bit, um, I have been a major fanatic for uh uh, vehicles. I like old cars and I've seen a lot of the guys that they work on old cars and things on YouTube. And I'll occasionally watch their videos just to see how would you put this on or whatever else. If I have a vehicle I need to fix, you know, I'll look it up or something. Um, you know, uh, and I'm seeing a lot of these guys and they're saying that the parts for the old vehicles are not very good quality. And they're putting, you know, mechanics, I mean, the guys with their mechanic, auto mechanics, and they have, you know, a channel on YouTube or whatever, and they can, um, you know, they repair cars. And these guys are saying that they'll go to the car parts place and they'll get, they'll have to buy two or three times the same part because it's not machine correct because it's made overseas someplace. And they're saying this is not good. You know, the, the car industry is really falling apart and you have the chip shortage and, and all that other stuff. It's, I mean, it's crazy. Uh, so what's, what's the future of auto, you know, cars and things like that? I mean, the newer ones track where you go and everything else. I mean, it's, it's insane. And what about the price of gas? See, again, you're dependent on all that stuff. Um, get into the thing of uh, horses and whatever else. And I don't know the first thing about horses, so I'm not trying to, you know, again, condemn somebody because they have a car or something. Um, I'm not really all that great with horses, but that's something that I might have to learn in the future. Um, something I'm open to. Um, just some things to think about, and you know, going forward into the future uh, with all the, the stuff that's coming. Uh, what did people do in the Bible times? How did they live? Um, how did ancient man live? You know, they weren't just starving and whatever else. Um, you might have to move to areas that, you know, have better 
food source or whatever else. Um, there's a lot of different options out there that ancient people did that require more work. And you say, well, that I don't. You know, how are you going to have a horse right now? And how would you do this? And how would you do that? Well, yeah, like I said, it's not the time right now. You can start to study it, start looking into it. Um, but you know, they start bringing in this green agenda stuff. Uh, we are going to be forced, if you want to remain free, you will be forced to go back to ancient path type of stuff. Old paths. Wisdom. And the Bible tells you to ask for it. So, uh, how can you start going off grid instantly? Okay, today, right now, how can you start to go off grid? Point number one read books like Foxfire the Foxfire series and One Man's Wilderness and any other types of books that you can find about ancient wisdom, how people did things without electricity before the electric control grid came in, or people, you know, Dick Prennicky wasn't exactly trying to revive ancient methods or anything like that. He was just saying, I want to move out in the middle of nowhere in Alaska and uh, there's no power out there, but I can survive just fine. You know, a lot of the right, you know, thinking. You have to educate yourself. Again, asking for the old paths, the, the Lord will start to show you some things. He'll lead you into the direction of, um, you know, learning and things about a lot of this old stuff. Another thing that you can do is ask yourself the question, what do you really need, need being the key word, to survive? Uh, something to think about there. What are the really the things that you just can't be without? Um, and another thing that uh, I think is a good thing, if you would eventually have to move, you're, you're some kind of refugee or whatever else, you have to get out of the, get out of Dodge, as they say, uh, things really go bad, there's bombing happening and, and whatever else, and you have to get out of there. Well, you need to think of a mindset, you start out, quote unquote, homeless, even if you have things with you, say, okay, I'm going to be homeless in terms of I'll go to a property and I'll just say that all I have is food and raiment like the Bible says there with you know that you're to be content okay I have food and raiment you know food in my stomach clothes on my back it's all I have all right is that would that be a pretty rough way to go through the night and whatever else yes well then build up from there but what I'm saying is that way you start out small you're thinking small okay do I have food? Do I have clothing? Good set of clothes and some food with me and whatever else. Yes. All right, then go to the next you know, thing there, the Bible. Make sure you have a Bible with you. But start building up from there instead of – because, see, what you do is when you, people get all mixed up with the off-grid thing is they think, I have to have everything figured out right away or else I'm a failure. That's why I'm saying start out homeless in your mind. All right, start out food, clothing, and a Bible, we'll say. And you say, well, I have more than that. Well, good. Then you do more than that, or you can do more than that. Hopefully I'm making sense with that. I don't know how else to say it. Um, uh, another thing to remember, all of your ancestors, all of our ancestors were once off-grid. They did it. We can do it. We can rediscover a lot of that stuff through prayer, asking the Lord, how do we do this and whatever else? Start to study, you know, your past. And I mean your past, whatever your ancestry is and things, getting in touch with that and saying, okay, um, I'm my ancestors came from Germany, my ancestors came from Spain, my ancestors came from China, my ancestors came from Africa, from wherever. How did they live? How did they do those things? And um, another very important scripture I'll share real quickly here. Um Deuteronomy chapter 32, Deuteronomy 32, um, verse 8, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. I have yet to find really a good way to separate you know, you know, the nations into the 12 different boundaries there. But the whole point is, when you understand your ancestry, you understand that there's an inheritance there. God blesses certain people with certain skills and attributes and whatever else. I don't have the skills of somebody that lives in 
the Sahara Desert or something like that over in Africa. There are some people over there that are very talented and I'm sure I can learn a lot from, but that's not the boundary of my ancestry. There's people in Japan that know a lot of good things in China or India or wherever. My ancestry is different. My ancestry is Switzerland, Germany, and sort of the British Isles and things. I have some you know, Scottish Highlander you know, blood in me as well. And that's my ancestry. The barbaric, you know, Germania, Britannia, if you go way back, you know, um, that's where my inheritance is. So I can look at the way that those ancient people did things and I can say, all right, uh, what are those skills, those old paths? That's my inheritance that God has prepared for me. Um, if I go outside of my boundary, um, you know, and I, I know people would say, well, you're in North America. Yeah, but if you study Japheth, you know, he will dwell in the tents of Shem. It's a prophecy for the future. That's why my ancestors came here, to get away from the Roman Catholic control of Europe. We came here and we carried out, we didn't say, oh, we'll just come and live like the Native American people. No, we didn't do that. We brought our inheritance from Europe and came over here and oftentimes we're settling in areas that were almost identical climate wise to where we came from. So rediscovering your past is a very important part of that because there's an inheritance there that God has for you. Um, that's an important thing. Um, another one that you can do a way to, that you can go off grid today in terms of that you're, you know, let's expand the term of off grid more than just getting away from the electric power grid. Let's say self-sufficient, another way to say it. Um, another thing that you need to do for that is control your spending and get out of debt as quickly as you can, because that's going to be very important. If you can control your spending, live very frugally, get yourself out of debt, no more credit cards, anything else like that, get out of debt and, you know, really spend some time praying. Okay, Lord, what do you want me to do with what's coming and, and whatever else? Um, an important thing. Try to cut unnecessary conveniences out of your life. Try to start doing things by hand. Um, a quick thing that you can do is just start washing your dishes by hand. That might not sound like an important thing, but it's a very important thing. Um, one of the things that we do being off grid is we do not uh, just, we have no hot water that we can, you know, spigot that we can turn on. So what we'll do is we, if there's a dish that we can put on our wood stove or not a dish, but a, if there's something we can put on our wood stove with water in it and a little bit of dish soap, soap like a drop or two, we'll do that. We'll have a frying pan that we used, um, not the cast iron one that we do you don't really want to wash those with soap and water but um because it ruins the seasoning of the pan or the skillet i mean but if we have a stainless steel uh, frying pan what i do is i just put a little tiny bit of water in the bottom a few drops of dish soap put it on top of the stove and it heats the water up in a matter of a minute or two take it off and clean out the pan very quickly and wash it off and done you can use a tea kettle to, hot, to heat your hot water instead of just sitting there with the spigot running and putting your hand in underneath and waiting and waiting until it finally heats up. If you have a wood stove or some other thing that's non electric to heat your water, try doing dishes with the uh, hot water from a tea kettle or putting it in a frying pan or things like that. Another thing I've done is uh, after I get the frying pan clean, um, I can put more water in it, a little bit more water and some more dish soap heat it up again and then I can put all my silverware in there and just wash it quick and dump it all out, rinse everything off and there you go. You can save a lot of water that way. Um, try to get away from the, the conveniences of a dishwasher and things like that. Start doing your dishes by hand. Um, you know, if you have an electric mixer or something like that and it's something that you could actually mix up by hand, do it that way. Instead of making mashed potatoes in your mixer or your blender, Try making them get an old potato masher and use that. Do it by hand. Um, start to, to revert back to, okay, I don't need these conveniences. If things go really bad, I'm not going to just be this helpless you know, slave that's tied to the grid, the electric grid. Start to do things more difficult in, in a more difficult way. I mean, obviously, if you're, you know, I'm not saying to go out and, and mow your yard with a pair of scissors or something like that, you know. 
hopefully you know what I'm saying by that. <laughs> you know, don't make it so ridiculous that it just doesn't make sense anymore. But try to do things the low tech way, the old fashioned way. Another thing that would be great, start going to historic museums. See how people did it, things in the past. Look at some of the, the ways that they have things set up and this is how people used to live and whatever else. Again, study history. Ask for the old paths. That's a very smart thing to do. You say, I don't have the land, brother. I can't get the land. I'm, I live in the city or whatever. Okay, then start to study. Start to pray. Start to say, I'd really like to live a more simple, sustainable life where I can't be controlled by the devil's people. That's what the main reason of me doing this whole seminar was about. Um, not so much about people can go and live in the beauty of nature and whatever. That's great. But the control that I see coming from the government, it's just going to get worse. And you own nothing and be happy. Yeah, okay, because I guess the rest of the world is just, you know, they just take everything away from you and there's just debt and whatever else. And so come on into the smart city, you know, prison. And you'll own nothing in there, but you'll be happy because you'll get some kind of food that we give you and whatever else. Uh, not my way of wanting to live in the future. And, uh, of course, a, a very important thing, too, is learn to walk. Um, most of us do not walk enough. And it's really good for your health. Um, what I'm doing right now is actually very unhealthy. What you're doing is probably very unhealthy as well. Sitting down a lot is really not that good for your health. And I have to remind myself, hey, instead of driving my vehicle down to the end of the lane to do something, just walk. I remember I had a neighbor years ago, and um, it was a half mile, my property, when I had the, the one I showed in one of the previous ones about buying off-grid land. Um, my property that I had in Littleton, Maine, um, it began a half mile off the road is where my property began. I had to go back a right of way one half mile back in and I hiked back in all the time and I just, you know, if I had stuff to take back into the property. I'd carry it on my back or something or on my shoulders and he thought I was crazy. You know, this, my neighbor, my neighbor had a guy working for him. The guy was working for him. He thought I was crazy. He'd say, I remember the one day I'm, I'm getting ready to carry some stuff and he said, are you walking that stuff back to your property? And I said, yeah. And he said, oh, man. He said, that's a half mile back in there. Yeah. It's kept me in good shape. Um, I don't know where I'd be right now if I didn't um, make my body work really hard sometimes. Uh, it would be a bad thing. I am, certainly would be suffering health-wise. So learn to walk. Um, we have... Uh, here in town, we have a post office down this way and bank and a grocery store and everything. And a lot of times we walk. Um, you know, most people in town will walk and things, and that's that's a great thing. So try to get more self-sufficient. Try to and pray. And I mean, I, I know some of you are in really bad situations. I, I get emails from people and I and, uh, you know, different things and people say you know i'm have this thing wrong with me i'm living in the city i'm by myself i'm a widow or this or that or whatever what should i do well pray um if you're saved if you're genuinely born again then you can pray and just say all right lord i'd really like to get out of this situation show me what i should do get your nutrition if you're in a in a really bad situation make sure you're saved First and foremost, we have a salvation message on our, you go to my main channel page and the salvation message comes up, watch it. Go through the scriptures. I go through the, show the scriptures and everything else. Watch that. Make sure you're saved. Okay. Secondly, get your nutrition fixed up. All right. Uh, and that doesn't mean that you have to go out and buy the finest organic foods and eat. You, you will be surprised just removing processed junk food from your diet if you're drinking poison pop get that stuff out of your diet don't go out to eat no fast food that stuff's expensive you talk about all oh, organic foods the fast food stuff's expensive and it's getting more expensive as time goes by get that junk out of your diet just go and get some apples or some potatoes or some some good meat and things 
buy some good sausage or whatever again whatever your ancestry was you know known for and whatever else get that stuff start to cook on your own and watch your health start to improve you'll start to think more clearly uh, that's a big thing i think a lot of people don't realize how toxic substances in food actually destroy your ability to think clearly but you start to get your health in check then start to study start to really research and study and things how to live in a sustainable way implement some of it in your life wherever you live wherever you're at find ways to start implementing some of what i've taught in this seminar and get debts paid down um go camping if you say, well, I can't go camp. Okay, can you find a park locally that you could walk to, drive to, and then walk around the park, get some fresh air? There's a lot of things that you can do to point yourself in this direction and slowly get there. And just, okay, Lord, uh, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I'm ready for this whole thing. What should I do? Get a little uh, motor home or live in your van for a while or, well, there's a lot of things that you can do. Study it. Pray about it. What did your ancient ancestors do? So that's about all I have to say for now um, for this off-grid seminar. There's a whole lot more I could be putting into this whole thing, but I'm, I'm just trying to give people a, a thorough yet basic understanding of, of what, um, what to do to go off-grid and to be more self-sufficient and to return to those old paths where is the good way and you'll find peace so we can end here with some questions um still have some time again put question and then your question in behind it that way i can see it easier Question, is it a sin to take martial arts classes like boxing or MMA? Um, well, I've known people that get into the thing of, you know, martial arts and whatever. And my contention with it is you're basically training yourself not to hurt somebody. Because um, I remember my nephew was actually supposed to be sparring with a girl. He was just a boy, probably about 10 or 11 years old. And he was supposed to be sparring with a girl in his karate class. And they had all the padding stuff on their faces and gloves and all this stuff. And he punched her in the face and he knocked her out. And uh, he was an 11-year-old boy. It wasn't, you know, huge or anything. But he just, they're fighting. And he went, bam, and punched her in the face and knocked her out. And he got reprimanded for that. And they're thinking, uh, no, if you're in a fight, you're supposed to knock somebody out. So there's, there's some weird stuff with martial arts. It was originally, you know, basically uh, dancing they would do and, and whatever else and then they some guys said hey we can make money off of this so um i really I, I think it's not the best idea to get into it um question those living in the cities should have a bag with basic items any portable tent if they have to leave for whatever reason yeah um you know i've spoken against the thing of um bug out bags because if you buy one commercially that has everything you need in it it's just a bunch of junk that you know will break and basically get you killed um, but yeah if you have you know some things that you could really use and whatever else uh, make a backpack with things that you could just grab and go yeah i think that's a good idea um question think would jesus if he was on earth now ride in a earth scorching metal Death trap, that is a car. Uh, probably not. I think a lot of people from the Bible times, an ancient man, anybody from the ancient world would probably come forward and just say, I'm, get, I'm not getting in that thing. <laughs> I remember the, I actually read a story the one time where they were taking people on trains, um, this first steam engines and things back in the 1800s. And I think they got it up to, you know, 10 or 15 miles an hour and the people were scared to death. They thought that was just so fast, you know, and you think, oh, they were so, so dumb. Uh, no, they actually were smarter because how many people have been killed in high speed crashes? So 
but we just forget that. We just take it for granted now that you can go really fast. Um, but yeah, good point. Best way to bring in cash in off-grid living. Um, pay for things in cash as much as you can. Um, if you're trying to hide cash on your property or, or whatever, uh, that's problematic because cash can get moldy or whatever else can burn in a fire. Question, would you be open to having a live debate with Robert Breaker to clarify everything with the claims against him and what not to see if he is saved or not? I uh, don't think that would ever happen. Honestly, um, debates are problematic because they're not really, they're kind of condemned in scripture and things. But, um, you know, I've been going back and forth with the thing of Breaker, and then he makes videos and he's always coming out and attacking what I preach and whatever else. So, you know, technically the debates have already happened. And, you know, some kind of controlled debate or whatever else, both sides would come out saying we won. You know, if I saw the guy in, in person, which probably won't ever happen, but if I did, you know, I'm not afraid to talk to anybody for any reason. Um, but uh, an actual debate and whatever else, eh, I don't know. I think it probably would just be a big waste of time, really. Uh, he's not going to change his positions, and I'm not going to change mine. So what would it prove? Any other questions? Question, what do you think about TikTok? I heard they use it to spy on people. Um, pretty much anything on the internet can be used to spy on people. Um, question, are you still selling hard drives? Yes, I am. Um, they're really starting to get scarce now, so I don't, I'll have to probably discontinue them eventually. But uh, I used to be able to get five at a time. Now it's something like two at a time. So I still have a few in stock, but, you know, not that many. Having brothers that live off grid can be helpful in training. Yeah. Um, how high is gas in your area? It's 379 here in Cincinnati. Um, last time, which would have been Monday, I think it was right about 369 here. So um, I actually heard that uh, when the 2008 crash thing happened, where there was really a big economic crash back then in 2008 is when gas hit $4 a gallon. So we're not far from that now and we're a lot worse off. Um, is it better to live in a small town rather than a city if your family isn't ready to go fully off grid? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you get out into the countryside and, in a, you know, any kind of an area where it's just a small little town or something. I mean, like I said, here in this town of Patton, there's, you know, maybe a thousand, two thousand people, something like that in this town. People have chickens in their backyards. So you couldn't do that in the city. So there are there are plenty of small towns with everything that you need and you can walk to where you need to go and whatever else and save a lot of money on fuel expense. Um so Develop hobbies where you can make useful things that you can sell or barter as well as improve practical skills that you can service out to people. Yeah. Again, you know, reading the history books of the area here, there were guys that were doing four or five different things for a living. You know, they have one guy, he runs the one store in town, plus he's also the undertaker, plus he also does blacksmithing, plus he also farms, you know, things like that. You know, 
the men in the past had many different skills. It wasn't just I you know, went to college and this is my training and that's all that, that, that I can do. No, they had a lot of different skills. So. Question, will there be a video you do on self-defense and different weapons for different situations? Um, no. No, there's enough of that stuff on YouTube. Um, no, I don't need to. Um, Any other questions? Oh, there's one, I guess. Okay. Thoughts on crypto. Um, there's a lot of problems with crypto, that whole thing. Um, just a simple thing. I've heard people say, well, you know, they can seize your bank account, but they can't seize my crypto. Yes, they can. Um, and, you know, you have a power outage or whatever else. Your crypto is not. You won't be able to access it. And then if the bank, you know, the government comes through and says, uh, you're not allowed to sell it or whatever else, I mean, there's a lot of things that can happen with that. Um, yeah. I thought you did a video on self-defense. I talked about the scriptures that support self-defense, but I didn't do it on showing anything. I had some guns on me when I was doing the sermon, but that was it. Years ago, I did that one. Um, are you still putting videos on Rumble? Yeah, I actually uh, synced up my YouTube and my Rumble channel, so whatever I put on YouTube instantly goes over to Rumble and is there. So... What's the fastest you've read through the Bible cover to cover? I don't think I ever have, honestly. I I read the Bible um, where the Lord leads me, and I've read through the Bible. I don't know how many times. I have no idea, but I don't just pick it up and, okay, Genesis to Revelation, see how quick I can do this. I've just never believed in that because there are times that I'll be reading the Bible and my mind starts to drift and wander and I will stop and, and say, okay, Lord, I'm sorry about that. And I'll go back and I will focus on what I'm reading. Um, I've known, you know, professing Christians and they'll just go through and it's like a little, little bell they ding, you know, ding, got through it again. They'll write it in their Bible or something, got through it. And, and they just go through as many times as they can. And I've just never been into that. I just, you know, I'll go and I'll say, okay, Lord, where do you want me to study the Bible? And I'll go back. Proverbs is my favorite book in the whole Bible. There's just so much profound truth in that book. Um, and then you get into the Pauline epistles. I love the Pauline epistles, obviously, because it's written to Gentile believer like myself. Um, but I, I study the Bible, the whole Bible. But if I'm doing a specific study, I might have to read through an entire book of the Bible to do that study or, or whatever. So it just kind of comes up differently like that, but, um, hmm. Back from a sudden blackout, funny in a way. <laughs> How to prepare for off-grid living, yes. Very important. Um, oh. Are any of your solar panels from Harbor Freight? No, they're not. Ours are more of the professional grade and whatever else and we have, you know, almost no problems with them. They're really good. What do you think about Christians getting rapture dreams? I've had a few myself. I don't really put a lot of stock in dreams. Um, I've had some bizarre dreams and, you know, a lot of bizarre dreams, so.
Have you ever read a chapter in the Bible and it takes you to another verse? Yeah. Yeah. You think, oh, that was, I wonder, what's that verse? How's that go? That it almost seems like it line up there, and, you know, you look it up and, yeah, okay, yeah, or oh, not quite, but, but, oh, no, the other verse I was thinking about, you know, the Bible, if you want to see, you know, it's kind of an interesting way to look at this, but I believe that the Bible is a picture of eternity. How so? The cross references and scriptural tie ins. It just goes and goes, and this ties into there, and that ties into here, and you can just, it just keeps going. It's like this endless thing that just <laughs> comparing scripture with scripture. It's just this verse and that one, and this. There's just no end to it. I've seen that. It's just amazing. What is the most important survival gear to buy first? Well, in terms of the physical, I'm, you know, most important is the Bible. That's spiritual. But uh, the most important survival gear to buy first, um, hmm, that's actually a really good question. Uh, a knife, a good knife, I think, is important to be able to cut things and, and whatever else. I'm a big knife guy. I always have been since I was a boy. Um, they have these little uh, things. I carry one on my keychain, just a little little Leatherman tool you can see mine's all beat up from years of use and it has you know the pliers inside of it that's important if you have to pick something up that's really hot or you can you know do whatever else you have a splinter in your finger I can actually use these to get a splinter out um, you know it has all kinds of little can openers and little pocket knife and scissors and whatever else on it those are come in quite handy I also carry a fingernail clipper there I have a piece of leather cord wrapped around it because if I don't the thing is it it'll open up then it's poking me in the leg and whatever else um, then I have it on a little carabiner like that you know that you can open and take it off if you need to use it and uh, so um, this set of keys right here is for my my plow truck that I use in the winter months but in the summer I can just take that off and then it's less keys to carry um normally i would carry a uh my flashlight in my i have a sort of a cargo pocket on my pants but i have it in my vest right now i have my vest on i wear this thing pretty much all winter and i just put a flashlight in you know um just a stream light flashlight not really the best thing um as far as you know how do you start fires or whatever i don't really start fires that often um in terms of out in the woods or whatever the primitive survival thing i talked about that um but just the simple basic everyday carry things you have flashlight pocket knife little thing that you can do stuff with and whatever else i don't carry a first gate first aid kit with me or anything like that um but survival gear, you, you start out with the simple basic stuff that you'll carry every day and use every day. And I used to think flashlights were so stupid. Why would you need a flashlight every day? Until I actually started carrying one, and then it was, oh, wow, yeah, you know. Um, it is pretty useful as a tool. Uh, there's many times I can't quite see in something, and I'll just turn on my flashlight and look and see what is that. Or you know, if I have a splinter and I can't really see it too good, put the flashlight on it, and oh, there it is, you know. So I could really go off on that um, thing, but uh, have you or would you consider making a video about trapping and skinning animals? No, I, I haven't really. Oops, I haven't really done any um, any kind of video on that. Um, start showing guts and blood and whatever else on YouTube, and I. My channel will get buried probably even deeper than it's already buried. Um, no, I haven't done that. And, and again, other people have. So, question: Do you believe Donald Trump can get saved and truly help this country in the next election, or is he gone? Is he too far gone? And is he part of the secret societies, or not that high up? Pence maybe higher up. Um, Donald Trump is a uh, Freemason. He is a he was Jesuit trained. The guy's a total scumbag. He didn't do anything good for this country. He was part of God's judgment on this country. Um, 
pretty much all the politicians at this point in time are scum. America's getting what they deserve with very rotten leaders. Um, but Trump isn't going to turn anything around. Um, what is the easiest food to carry while camping or living off grid for first timers? Sorry if this was already asked. In one of the other live streams, we talked about pemmican, um, which is a really kind of, a, you know, you can make it with fish oil or peanut butter. Peanut butter I like a little bit more. Um, chopped up dried fruit, beef jerky, um, even shredded coconut and things like that. You put a lot of, you know, kind of high fat, um, natural sugar, not added sugar stuff, and you mix it all together, and it's really good for, for your energy. If you're wanting to do that, I mean, there were literally times that I would be building and I'd just have some water and some pemmican along with me. And that was enough to keep me going while working very hard. Do you use a cell phone? I'm getting rid of my smart smartphone for a button phone. Um, no, I don't have a cell phone. Any type of cell phone, smartphone, flip phone, whatever. I don't have anything. Is it normal for a Christian to be discouraged and be attacked when praying all the time? <laughs> yes. Um, your mind will wander. You'll get weird music coming in. It's Praying isn't just this peaceful little thing and where it's, it's fighting. It's warfare. So, yes, you will be attacked while you're praying. New pastors at Hillsong. Not that I follow it. Any thoughts? No idea. I haven't checked into that. I know what Hillsong is, but I don't know anything about their new pastors or whatever. Will you be doing some cooking videos? I've thought about that. I'm not sure what to do. Um, I don't know. I've thought about doing some wood cook, wood uh, wood stove cooking videos, off grid wood stove cooking videos. Um, that's all we do right now. We don't cook here at the in town or anything. Uh, we do in the summer months because for now it's we don't have a off-grid kitchen set up that's separate from our sleeping area, and it would get rather miserable if I was cooking, um, and eating or cooking and sleeping in the same building off-grid. Um, but I don't know. I might do that. I'm not sure. It's still something I'm praying about. Pretty much all of our politicians are Catholic. Yeah, put that comment up because you're exactly right. People need to remember that. If they're working for the Catholic Church, then they have dual allegiance to the Vatican first and to their country second. And if the Vatican says jump, they say how high. Um, what's the best long-term food storage to buy? Um, well, the best and the easiest, uh, there's different types of dried beans, but they're not the easiest to cook. Um, the best ones would be something like oatmeal. Um, keep it in a dry area, um, or also barley, couscous, rice, things like that. They will last pretty much indefinitely. City dwellers can start making hard tack. It is a tested food. Yeah, kind of like a little hard biscuit thing. Yeah. You're supposed to use tallow, which is purified animal fat and pemmican. Yeah, uh, animal fats are, are the best. So, but peanut butter tastes better. <laughs> Nut butters taste better. Um, if you don't want to be completely off grid, what area in Maine would be good to move to? Um, well, that depends. On what you're looking for I mean southern Maine down near the coast is beautiful we thought about moving there before we bought our property um, a lot of blueberries uh, the beauty of the northern Atlantic um, I love it down in Washington County um, over sort of south uh, west of us uh, Somerset County there's more a lot more wildlife than what we have up here up here we get um, you know, Baxter State Park, the beauty of that, and, and there's we still have 
you know, pretty good mixture of a lot of things. And you go up, way up north to Aroostook County, the Madawaska, the high part of Maine. And up in there, you can you get a lot more cold up there, and a lot of the you know French speaking people up there and everything else. Um, Southern Maine, you get down into the Portland area and whatever there, you have a lot more city down there, which is why I stay away from it. Um, there's a lot of different places that you can go in, in any state, not just Maine. What type of oil do you use for making mayonnaise? We stopped making mayonnaise. It's we don't really need it, so we just stopped making it. Um, is it bad to read the Bible cover to cover? No. I personally like reading it that way, but I do sometimes have a hard time focusing. If you're just reading it to, to say, you know, I've been through the Bible, you know, X number of times, that's just pride. That would be the thing I'd war warn about. But if you're reading it from cover to cover, that's not a problem. Question. I learned that if you freeze the grains for a week, like flour, etc., it can kill the mite eggs that make them go bad. Then you vacuum seal it. A lady from Canada, Canada demonstrated seven year old flour. Yeah. Or if you just store it in a frozen area like what we have, it's really not much of a problem. <laughs> How's gas price in North Maine, where there's not much there? Not sure how rural gas is. It's 419 here in Lancaster, PA. It's still below four dollars a gallon, but that could have changed. I don't know. I haven't gotten any in a few days now, so things are changing so rapidly. But um, all right. Well, we're over an hour here, and um, so I'm going to close down the off-grid seminar, I guess. And um, you're welcome to everybody out there that's already said thank you for making these. Uh, hopefully, you've, everybody out there has has learned something at least. Has been able to take away something from this um, series of videos that I did. I'm going to be getting back to regular preaching and teaching of the Word of God. I have a few interesting videos I'm going to be doing in the future. Some, you know, interesting. Um, sermon topics things i need to preach on and, and whatever else and uh so if you can hit the like button that would be great just to make sure that uh, the video can maybe reach some people or whatever else uh you know just pray for the channel and another thing you know to get around the algorithm stuff on youtube it really does help me if people can send you know, share my videos with other people. And um, that's something, you know, I'm, YouTube's just not going to promote this channel. And that irritates me because, you know, it's not fair. It's an unfair thing. And, you know, you have Robert Breaker and Gene Kim. I proved that both of them are, you know, using monetized, or they're not monetized. Well, they are monetized, but I'm saying they're, they're using the artificial intelligence bots to inflate their channels. and you know it's dishonest that's the whole thing it's dishonest and you look at these guys and you know where are the atheist websites attacking them they're not there um so it's i remember years and years ago some guy said he said brian he said with your quality of videos that you put out you know just the scenery and all the other stuff he said you should have over a hundred thousand subscribers easily you know and that was way back 2000 you know, 14 or something like that when that guy said that to me. And, um, you know, it just, it, it irritates me because it's just, it's, you know, they're just, they're lying. They're deceiving. And with YouTube, you know, they, what they do to just keep this channel suppressed and everything else. And my videos, I've seen so many times my videos actually start to do pretty good. And then just boom, the views get cut off. Um, my salvation message, it just, it can't go through, you know, every time it goes up 200,000 range, I know it was over 200,000 views for a while and it's brought back down under 200,000 views. I just think, come on, that's, it's not, you're not being honest. Just, it's very dishonest. 
lying about this channel. And, well, not I shouldn't say lying, but I don't even know how you'd say that, how that they just keep me suppressed and things and delete people's comments. I don't, I'm not deleting comments and things unless you're putting links in or you have profanity. I usually don't delete people's comments. Um, so, yeah. So, um, that's going to be it. I could continue going on here, but need to get some other stuff done today. So thank you to everybody out there for your kind words of encouragement as I've been going through this whole thing. And um, just pray for the ministry. I don't ever want to get so huge that, you know, I have a million subscribers or something like that. But I just, I have a calling to be able to get two people. And if YouTube is purposefully suppressing this channel, that ticks me off. Um, it's not about you know, well, I can make so much more money or whatever else. That's not the issue. It's, I take my talents that the Lord gave me and I, and I try to reach people with the word of God and do things that are unique and interesting. And, you know, and then to have that suppressed, um, it just isn't right. And they will answer for it. And I know that, um, but uh, I will probably be coming out with some stuff that is, uh, you know, if if I come out with anything controversial about the whole pandemic or whatever else, it I still am not feeling. I can see the things changing here on YouTube, but I'm still probably going to put that on Rumble, um, and not here. Um, so, but anyhow, that will be it. Um, and we will see everybody in the next video. Please do keep us in your prayers, and thank you for all those who watched all the way through and were were here in support i love your comments and everything else over there and um let's pray about it pray about what the lord wants for your future uh, i don't want to see my viewers um perishing with the lost because i didn't prepare you or tell you or whatever else i don't want to see that i care enough about people to tell them the truth um, i'm not like the other preachers that just uh preach you know just Bible stuff that you could figure out yourself and whatever else, you know, I, I've always tried to um, Experiment on, on us and things and see what works and see how you could prosper with your health and your relationship with the Lord and whatever else That's what I try to do. And that's what this whole off-grid seminar has been about. So Thank you to everybody out there. Like I said, and we will see you in upcoming videos Goodbye for now